In this tutorial, we are going to look at absolute positioning using RTK-Lib. It is a continu continuation of the previous tutorial in which we presented how to install RTK-Lib. To run RTK-Lib, we have to go to the directory where uh, the software is located and we go to the bin directory and then we look for the executable RTK post we double click and now we have the uh, the, the uh, pop-up with the options that's the graphical user interface we are going to use the data sets that we collected in October of last year during a uh, kinematic surveying uh, here at uh, UNB campus uh, in a course that is part of um, our Jordan's geomatics uh, programs called kinematic positioning and uh, we have the uh, data collected for the base station that was set up and then the car had on top of it two antennas antenna 25066 antenna 25067 and uh, here we have all the data we have the observation in Rhinox, we have the navigation data and uh, i have also downloaded from the igs the igs products because we are also going to do a, um, a PPP precise point positioning so to to download the IGS data I went to this uh, page from the IGS International GNSS service and they have done some modifications in terms of how to access the data so here there are four links uh, one link is from uh, Goddard Space Flight Center uh, NASA uh, in the US the other one is from the uh, Institute uh, National Geographic, uh, Geographic National from France, and then the other one from the European Space Agency, and then also from the uh, University of Luxembourg. Uh, to download the data uh, from uh, from uh, the IGS, it is very important to uh, to know the GPS calendar. The National Geodetic Survey has has a very handy calendar that we can have a look at. Uh, and uh, it is uh, separated by years it goes all the way starting in 2006 and um, so uh, in our case we we are working with uh, uh, 2019 the day that we have made the data collection was October the 11th that is uh, GPS week uh, 2074 so first we're going to process uh, the base station using the um, uh, absolute positioning or just the pseudo range point positioning uh, we are going to import the Rhinox data and uh, here we have the base base station we are going to import the uh, the one second data to have lots of uh, solutions and uh, we are going to import the navigation data uh, and uh, we are going to get uh, it doesn't matter to get the 30 seconds or the uh, one second uh, data rate because the navigation that uh, uh, it contains is the same uh, just going to click this one here and now uh, we can get the result the result I'm going to put in the directory uh, result I actually have done some processing before so I'm going to call these uh, uh the base station at one second using uh, pseudo range and using the broadcast orbits let's click save so uh, this is navigation so uh, this is essentially a navigation solution so we click here the execute i'm going to overwrite the file yes and uh, there you go the processing takes place and then we can actually have a look at the uh, the file this is the output file uh, which it is uh, uh, we have a header uh, with the, uh, the input file the observation and the uh, start uh, time the observation and time the mode is single uh, point positioning uh, elevation mask I, I chose 10 degrees broadcast orbits Sasta morning, uh, I mean the ionospheric model, we use the broadcast, the Klobuchar model, 
and the tropospheric we are just using plain Sastamoni ephemerides is broadcast so broadcast orbits and clocks so here is the um, what what the outcome is uh, the coordinates uh, in lat long and height there are other formats as well we can get the Cartesian coordinates XYZ for example Q5 means that uh, it's a single point positioning uh, we have the standard deviation and then we have the residuals so uh, we can close this here and we can have a look at the plot uh, and uh, what the uh, the software provides to us is something very interesting because it can give us the ground track this is basically uh, east and northern uh, horizontal positioning uh, and uh, it is centered here uh, I believe based on the uh, on the, the coordinates of the station that are in the Rhinex file uh, we can also see the uh, track uh, the, sorry the time series of the solutions in north east and up uh, we can uh, we, these uh, plots are not in the same scale we can we can rescale them uh, what is it okay here you go we can rescale them now they're all with uh, within plus and minus five and uh, which gives a good uh, perspective in terms of uh, of the solution and uh, <clears throat> uh, other things that uh, also the, the software computes the velocity of the vehicle but <laughs> there is no vehicle it's a stationary point so what we have here is essentially a, um, a byproduct of the noise and, uh, and of the, the pseudo range noise and the same thing with the acceleration there is no acceleration in the uh, in the antenna of course we also can get the number of satellites so most of the times we had a very good coverage uh, and we are just processing gps by the way let us now go back to rtk post and let us process in kinematic mode now we are going to process and, and in this exercise we're going to process uh, pseudo range navigation and uh, and uh, the uh, ppp precise point positioning so uh, let's do it with uh, just one antenna let me choose we know that we, we use two antennas uh, at this at this stage we want just to to get a taste of this um, uh, uh, point positioning so we are going to load uh, just one antenna here and uh, the first time we are going to do uh, the um, the uh, pseudo range point positioning the navigation we are going to load the navigation file and uh, we are going to call the solution uh, which I have created one already it is uh, 25 066 pseudo range pos okay so everything is 50 25066 everything looks okay let's go to the options uh, no we are not doing precise orbit with the broadcast orbit single single solution okay execute uh, where yes are, are going to overwrite and uh, here now we can look at the plot and uh, the plot here provide us the uh, solution pseudo range absolute positioning and um, uh, we can look at the ground track uh, and uh, it's uh, started from uh, UNB campus we drove around Fredericton across the river went to the north side and came back uh, the position is here so uh, here we have uh, east north and up and uh, we can well I'm not going to put in scale because of these uh, uh, large distances but the height is interesting because uh, we we are in the place that uh, we are uh, close to the uh, uh, to the ellipsoid we go to the by the river uh, and then we go up a hill and then there is a plateau another hill and you go back and then we come back to campus uh, here we can see the actual velocity this is actual velocity of the of the car this is the acceleration and uh, we have also the number of satellites in here um, so let me just uh, keep the uh, solution the ground track solution uh, now we are going to uh, um, to process carrier phase now carrier phase it uh, makes sense 
Carefaces it's more complicated because of the ambiguity, and uh, and the point position where carefaces was was never really uh, done uh, properly until the uh, the inception of the uh, precise the concept of precise point positioning, uh, which takes advantage of the IGS products. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to process uh, carrier phase. So uh, here we have, we're going to go to PPP kinematic solution uh, and uh, we are going to use precise orbits and uh, going to set here the ambiguity resolution for PPP ambiguity resolution. So let's uh, save OK. Uh, and uh, here we have the observation file, we have the navigation file here, but we need to add the orbits uh, and clocks which are contained in the sp3 file. So here we go, uh, everything looks okay, we have to change the name of the output file, and the output file I'm going to call 25 Six, six, yes, 2566 PPP. Okay, so everything looks okay. Let's click execute. Mm -hmm. We're going to override the file. It goes and goes and goes and bingo, it is done. And we can look at the plot. And uh, now we have, well, something that looks the same, of course, because it's the same itinerary. Uh, a few things here, carrier phase. Uh, is more sensitive to uh, uh, to cycle slips and uh, and to the obstructions. That is the issue of uh, of the ambiguity resolution that needs to if if there is a, a loss of lock, uh, new ambiguity has to be has to be assigned. So, um, but anyway, this is uh, we uh, essentially have done uh, PPP, which is uh, which is always nice, and uh, we can uh, put two solutions together, which is something nice that uh, RTK Lib offers to us. And now here we go. So in blue, we have the uh, uh, carrier phase precise point positioning. And uh, or the other way around. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at here. So solution one, uh, is, no, in red, in red, sorry, in red is the, um, uh, uh, absolute positioning, uh, pseudo range based, and uh, in um, in blue is the PPP. So we have some uh, 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 laws of lock, uh, some gaps in the solution here, uh, which is uh, which is uh, well something that uh, we'll have to uh, to uh, overcome one way or the other. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's uh, that's uh, what we can uh, all we can do now. Uh, if we look at this um, solution here, we have position. The position, of course, is going to look uh, very not very similar. Uh, the pseudo range and the carrier phase. Uh, we may see some obstructions in here. I'm going back to the to the plot just to show a few things uh, and velocity acceleration. So everything looks looks um, similar. Uh, the fact of life is that the uh, the Carafe solution is uh, uh, well, it it is going to be uh, slightly better or well, much better. It's going to be at the uh, centimeter decimeter level. Um, so uh, if we put both of them together. Uh, let me put here. Okay, let me go to this particular site here. Okay, this is a critical place in the uh, in the trajectory because we have a a, a overpass that is a, a bridge, a pedestrian bridge right here. So the car has to uh, to go underneath the bridge. There are some obstructions. Uh, and uh, here in the uh, this blob of red, probably there was a traffic light that the car had to stop. So uh, we can see here the uh, uh, the problem that uh, both 
carrier phase uh, solution and this pseudo range solution had to face. Uh, anyway, in this uh, tutorial, we, uh, we processed uh, pseudo range uh, point positioning in absolute and in, rel in, in kinematic mode. We processed precise point positioning in kinematic mode. Now what we will be doing next time, we're going to look at a carrier phase solution only. We're going to process both antennas, we're going to compare the solution of the antennas, and we're also going to process using post-process kinematics, so it's going to be a baseline solution which should be much better, and uh, we can take that as a reference, and we're also going to compare. So we're going to compare the carrier phase solutions. Uh, we can also look at uh, how, how different they are with the pseudo range, just so we can get some um, uh, idea in terms of uh, the quality that uh, these uh, different solutions can offer. Okay, see you next time.